This is a video on the ideal gas law equation. The ideal gas law equation is an equation that is based upon a gas behaving ideally or having ideal behavior. We'll talk a little bit about what it means to have ideal behavior for a gas in this video, but we'll carry on and we'll give you a better explanation in a future video. So, here we go. We're going to develop the ideal gas law equation. You know from Boyle's law that volume and pressure are inversely related to each other. So I'm going to write it in terms of the volume first as being inversely related to the pressure. We also know from Charles' law that volume is directly related to the Kelvin temperature. And we know from Avogadro's law that volume and the number of particles, or in this case the number of moles, is also directly related. So we have volume directly related to these three different items. What we're going to do is we're going to combine all three of them together like so. The volume is directly related to 1 over the pressure times the number of moles times the temperature. Unfortunately though, we have a proportionality sign in front of them, or between them, and it kind of makes it into a situation in which we really can't plug in numbers and solve a problem to find how any one of these variables affects the others in terms of actually making a prediction about a specific value. We can make predictions about it because we know the relationship, but we can't plug in numbers and solve for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a proportionality constant. A proportionality constant. The proportionality constant is given the symbol R. And so if we put the proportionality constant in here, again, this is a constant that makes it go from proportional to equal. And if we put the proportionality constant in there, we get something that looks like this. V is now equal to 1 over P times, whoops, that's supposed to be a P. All right, let's try again. 1 over P times N times R times T. So we usually don't write the equation like this. We usually write it like this. PV is equal to N times R times T. And what the ideal gas law equation does is it relates all four of the variables together. In the other um, laws that you learned about, we were only relating one variable with a second variable. So there's only, only two variables in the laws. But here, we're relating all four of the variables that we use to quantify gases. So, what does it mean to have ideal behavior and to follow this ideal gas law? Well, I'll tell you. So, whoops. When you have one mole of gas, in other words, n is equal to 1, that should be equal to, according to the equation, P times V over R times T. And this should always be true under every condition. And so, for now, this is how we define ideal behavior. So for one mole of gas, this must always be true. The pressure times the volume divided by R times T must come out to be equal to 1. This is not always necessarily true. But, assuming that a gas follows ideal behavior, this has to be true. So, how do we find the value of R? Well, it turns out, according to Avogadro, or actually based upon his ideas, one mole of a gas at what we call standard temperature and pressure, STP, that's standard temperature and pressure, which turn out to be zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. They are a standard set of conditions that have been defined. One mole of gas under this set of conditions has a volume of 22.414 liters. So if that's the case, and it is, If we have one mole of a gas, 
one mole of gas at zero degrees Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin, and a pressure of one atmosphere. And since it's one mole of gas under the standard conditions, the volume is 22. Whoops. That is not a two, Mr. Cresanti. 22.414 liters. If we take this and divide this all out, R comes out to B, and I'm going to round it, 0 0.0821 with the units of liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And this, my friends, is the value of R. So, we have the value of R. We know the ideal gas law constant. The ideal gas law constant says that P, well, having trouble with my P's today, P times V is equal to N, times R times T, where R is 0 0.0821 in the units of liter atmospheres per moles Kelvin. It also tells us that the volume has to be in liters, the temperature has to be in Kelvin, and the pressure has to be in atmospheres, right? Because if the unit of the gas law constant is liters, atmospheres, and Kelvin. So that means pressure has to be in liters. Sorry, let's try that again. Pressure has to be in atmospheres. Volume has to be in liters. Temperature has to be in Kelvin in order for this to be true. Okay. Now, my friends, there are examples in your textbook to see how to use this law, especially on pages like 186, uh, starting at 185 and going on to 186, take a look at those because I'm going to try to make this as short as I can, so I want you to take a look at them on your own. And if you have any questions, you can ask myself or Mr. Walsh tomorrow. Um, we're going to continue on and talk about the ideal gas law a little bit more. So, the value of R is a constant. So, you have a gas with a certain pressure, which you're going to call P1, and it has a volume of V1 and it has a certain number of moles, and a temperature of T1. Let's take that same gas with the same number of moles, change its pressure now to P2, so its volume is now going to be different, or V2. Remember, same number of moles, and a temperature of T2. So, we've got the same gas, same number of moles, we just change the conditions of temperature, pressure, and volume. Either way, though, remember, the ideal gas law constant is a constant, and the values have to come out to be equal to R. Well, if the first equation is equal to R and the second equation is equal to R, then obviously they both have to be equal to R. So what's the consequence of that? Well, the consequence is that P1, um, still having P problems, times V1 over N times T1 is equal to P2 times V2 over N times T2. So, again, if N is the same for both, and it is, we can cross it out, and we get an equation that says P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2, which, unlike the other laws that you've learned, now relates the three variables together, keeping the number of moles constant. So, look in your textbook at the examples on pages 185, 186, and also 187. And uh, I'm going to stop this video right now because it's getting a little long. And I'm going to break this down into a one other video. And I'll see you on the other side. And, if, of course, if you have any questions, see me or Mr. Walsh. So we'll talk to you later. Have a good night.